Hey everyone, welcome back to Global Vista. In today's episode, we're diving into a sobering topic, the top cities in the United States where racial inequality is most glaring. But keep in mind, we're not here to throw stones. Our objective is to shed light on issues that need urgent attention, because acknowledging a problem is the first step towards solving it. Let's get into it. Imagine this, you're in Racine, Wisconsin, a city where being black makes you 12 times more likely to end up behind bars compared to white residents. Or picture yourself in a town in Arkansas, home to the headquarters of the modern-day Ku Klux Klan. Jarring, isn't it? Our ranking is based on multiple criteria, including hate crime rates, economic statistics, and shared personal experiences. It's crucial to note that not everyone in these cities is contributing to the problem, Many are just unfortunate enough to live alongside neighbors who perpetuate racial discrimination. Starting off our list at number 10, Waterloo, Iowa. This city has the worst economic and social disparities in the country. From job opportunities to home ownership, the statistics paint a grim picture for black residents. A 2018 study by 24-7 Wall Street showcased just how stark the disparities were. The black unemployment rate in Waterloo is staggering, being over five times higher than that for white residents. And while nearly three quarters of white citizens own their homes, the same can only be said for about one third of black residents. Before we move on, if you're finding this video insightful, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. We'll continue bringing you impactful content like this. Now, back to the list. At number nine, we have Trenton, New Jersey. Racial profiling is rampant here with unarmed black citizens becoming victims of police brutality. During the COVID-19 pandemic, racial disparities in healthcare outcomes were particularly glaring, further emphasizing the systemic nature of the issue. Moreover, let's discuss the role of law enforcement in perpetuating racial disparities. The racial profiling incidents in Trenton, New Jersey, don't exist in a vacuum. They're a result of deeply rooted biases and problematic practices within the law enforcement agencies. These incidents send shockwaves through communities, eroding trust and exacerbating tensions. Next up is Rochester, New York. Don't let the progressive festivals and cultural events fool you. Racial inequality is a persistent issue. In July 2022, accusations arose surrounding a high-profile couple holding a racially insensitive party. Census data corroborates the racial divide, showing disproportionately high poverty rates among African American and Latino children. Another factor is economic disenfranchisement. Across these cities, one can easily observe the widening gap between racial communities when it comes to income and wealth. Rochester and its steep economic divide between black and white families is a prime example. When families lack the economic resources to move to safer neighborhoods or send their children to better schools, the cycle of poverty and racial discrimination perpetuates itself. Next up is Danville, Illinois. Once infamous for its racially motivated riots in the late 19th and early 20th centuries, Danville continues to grapple with racial discrimination to this day. As recent as May 2022, a White Lives Matter sign appeared amidst a protest, coinciding with a racially fueled shooting incident. Statistical data reveals disparities in education, income, and healthcare, painting a grim picture of inequality. One of the underlying issues that connect these cities is systemic racism. This is a form of racism that is embedded as a normal practice within society or an organization. For instance, Danville's history of racially motivated riots isn't an isolated issue. It reflects a deeply ingrained culture of racial discrimination that has seeped into educational systems, employment practices, and even healthcare delivery. Fresno, California takes the sixth spot. It's the fifth largest city in California, but it holds an unfortunate record. Over two decades, a staggering 76% of all reported hate crimes in Fresno County occurred within the city, primarily fueled by racism. In cities like Fresno, hate crimes are not just statistics. They are lived experiences that severely impact communities. It is important to recognize that each reported hate crime represents a shattered sense of security for the victim and the community they belong to. The psychological toll can be far-reaching, affecting mental health and well-being for years to come. Moving on, we have Peoria, Illinois. In this city, a racial divide is evident. 
particularly in the South Side, where low-income residents primarily reside. Only 32.6% of black residents own their homes, compared to 76.1% of white residents. But there's a glimmer of hope. The Joint Commission on Racial Justice and Equity is actively working to address these issues. It's also vital to highlight efforts aimed at improvement. For example, the activities of the Joint Commission on Racial Justice and Equity in Peoria are commendable. Acknowledging that a problem exists is the first step toward meaningful action, and organizations like this are crucial for steering these cities toward a more equitable future. Now, Harrison, Arkansas, once a sundown town, continues to make headlines for all the wrong reasons. The modern-day Ku Klux Klan has its headquarters just a 20-minute drive away, and racial inequality is reflected clearly in census data. Racine, Wisconsin is especially problematic. Not only are black residents 12 times more likely to be incarcerated, but school-aged children of color face harassment and discrimination regularly, making Racine an extremely challenging place for non-white residents to live. Education is another pivotal point. In Racine, Wisconsin, the educational experiences of students of color tell us that racism doesn't just start in adulthood. It begins much earlier. When children experience harassment and discrimination, it can have lasting effects on their self-esteem and aspirations, thereby affecting future generations. Milwaukee, Wisconsin is next, and it's considered the second most racially segregated city in America. Whether it's in education, healthcare, or employment, the chasm between racial groups is glaring. Wisconsin is a state often celebrated for its progressive policies, but the numbers tell a different story. For instance, the incarceration rate for black residents in Racine is 12 times higher than that for white residents. This isn't just an isolated statistic. It's a representation of a deeply flawed criminal justice system that exhibits racial bias. Milwaukee's situation is no better. It's one thing to know that a city is racially segregated. It's another to be identified as the second most racially segregated city in America. Whether it's education, maternal and infant mortality, or employment rates, the racial disparities are not just numbers, but are indicative of deeply rooted systemic issues that make life significantly harder for black residents. Last but not least, Naperville, Illinois. The town has seen its share of racial incidents, from being asked to switch tables in restaurants due to the color of their skin to derogatory remarks in council meetings, even today, the city exhibits economic disparities that disproportionately affect minority groups. One of the incidents that brought Naperville's racial issues to the forefront occurred in 2019 at a Buffalo Wild Wings restaurant. Black patrons were asked by an employee to change tables because a white customer felt uncomfortable sitting next to them. It's disheartening to think that in today's age, the color of one's skin can still determine where one can sit in a restaurant. Just a year later, during a council meeting in 2020, an individual used derogatory terms to describe Naperville's Asian residents, further highlighting the underlying racial tensions within the community. These incidents are not isolated. They represent deeper issues that stem from systemic factors. That wraps up today's deep dive. If this video resonated with you, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more thought-provoking content. Together, we can build awareness and inspire change.